Can I fool you? Hello and welcome to the channel where I live out my fantasy of being an educational YouTuber like these guys and compensate for the fact that I lack meaningful knowledge or special skills by lying. But I make it all seem okay by reminding you that I, the Ulrich Kendrick, specialize in combining truth, lies, and bad jokes and challenging you to spot the difference. I mean, this is better than if I started a gaming channel, right? Why does no one want to play with me? Anyways, today I am truth lie joking about handcrafting justice. I'm going to tell you three things about handcrafting justice, each of which may or may not be true. If you can figure out what is true and what isn't, you will win my respect. So let's run the graphics package that I paid $4,000 for and need to get my money's worth. To start off, let's talk about quilts. Whether decorative like these or purely functional, most quilts feature interesting patterns and arrangements of pieces. Some of the patterns evoke real items. But many are far more abstract. For some, the arrangement may be purely random, but most quilts follow variations on well-known patterns. There are hundreds of patterns, and they all have fascinating names. Okay, they all have names, and some of those names are fascinating. What I find fascinating may be different than This is a Dresden plate. This is the Drunkard's Path. This may evoke chips and salsa, but it's actually a pattern known as Circle of Geese. This one may seem random, but it's actually a disappearing nine patch. And this is a disappearing four patch. This one's a pineapple. Some other interestingly named patterns that I don't happen to have in the house are Arkansas Traveler, Courthouse Steps, Wheel of Fortune, Snail Trail, Aunt Dinah, Peace and Plenty, and best of all, Smittens. With a name like Smittens, it's gotta be good. And this arrangement of stars is known as handcrafting justice. This specific one has eight pointed stars, whereas most have six, and I've seen the occasional four. They're always arranged in an equal number of vertical and horizontal stars, creating a square. They're done in a wide variety of palettes, but yellow was almost always one of the dominant colors. I can't imagine where the name comes from. So, is handcrafting justice the name of a quilt pattern? Do I know about it because I have a lot of quilts around, or did I simply make it up? I'll never tell. Well, until the end of the video. But moving on. Let's talk about public broadcasting and the shows they make. If you are one of the smart, handsome, and popular types who, like me, grew up watching PBS, you may know this one already. In 1999, WGBH Boston, the same PBS affiliate who brought us Overdrawn at the Memory Bank, the basis of the second greatest Mystery Science Theater 3000 episode of all time, hired Dan Fredrickson, the man who had adapted Antiques Roadshow for the American market to create an original show. He came up with Handcrafting Justice. They envisioned it as a yearly holiday special, and the first and only episode was filmed and aired in December of 1999. This was essentially a PBSified Judge Judy-style show, it took place at the annual New England Craft and Specialty Food Fair and exclusively featured disputes between the artisans and craftsmen who had booths at the show. For the judge character, Fredrickson selected Emily Rooney, an accomplished journalist that the local PBS viewers would be familiar with, as she hosted several WGBH TV and radio shows like Beat the Press, The Emily Rooney Show, and Greater Boston. Personal side note. In my research for this video, I learned that Emily was the daughter of Andy Rooney, who I knew was the only tolerable part of when my parents watched 60 Minutes. Some weeks, he would get the last five minutes to rant and rave about something. I rarely understood what he was so upset about or why it mattered, but Old Man Angry is very entertaining. Enough so that this singular concept has spawned entire careers. Unfortunately, or maybe fortunately, the show just didn't work. It didn't help that most of the cases involved petty squabbles about whether one person was copying another's design or who kept dumping their trash in another vendor's stall. A second episode was never made, but from time to time a DVD of the show was offered as a reward for pledging at a high enough level 
during PBS pledgeathons across the country. I'd hold up a cuppy right now, but I opted for this Doctor Who mug instead. Does that sound like a show you would watch? Does it even sound like a show that existed? Because that's basically the game. Here's your last chance. Does handcrafting justice have a connection to Catholicism? The congregation of Our Lady of Charity of the Good Shepherd is exactly what it sounds like. An order in the Catholic Church that focuses on helping women and girls. In 1997, they started a project originally called Global Women's Exchange to connect women in developing countries who made crafts with buyers in America and also raise awareness of the situation of these women. Here is a poorly conceived skit that demonstrates an idealized version of the idea. At some point they realized, I assume, that the name implied that they were exchanging women. Well, anyway, for some reason they changed their name to Handcrafting Justice. The women would be involved in community centers run by the order where they would receive, according to their marketing manager, Catherine Leonetti, education and poverty relief. Ideally, the women would profit and improve their lives using the traditional crafts they learned growing up in their unique cultures. I read one success story of a group of women in La Florida, Peru, who turned this into a full-time job making dolls and seeing dramatic increases in their quality of life. Of course, not all women have some unique crafting skill passed down to them, and even for some that did, there was, in Leonetti's words, a limited international market. But not to worry. The organization taught many women to use a sewing machine and had them producing school uniforms for American children. So yeah. This doesn't fit into any disturbing historical patterns at all. Handcrafting justice shut down in 2016 and today lives on as a thing that I found on the internet. Well folks, that's all the options. Now it is time for you to decide. How many of them are true? Zero, one, two, three, four? And if any, which ones? I always encourage you to leave your guesses in the comments, but if you would rather fill the comments with Ogre Kendrick fanfics like last time, I guess that's okay. Results in... Option one, quilts. All of the names and examples I used are true. Except the last one. There is no quilt pattern called Handcrafting Justice. Option two, a one-off PBS show. I would totally watch this show if it was real, which it isn't. Option three, a Catholic church-backed trading organization. Is this one real, or have I told three lies in a row? It's true. So how'd you do? Anyways, I'll leave you with this bonus challenge. Is it true that literally anyone can create a Patreon account? Is this link real or a joke? Only one way to find out. Um, roll in screen.